Hi everyone, my name is Lori, my nickname is Rini, and this is Rini Bobini Creations. Today we're going to be working on a box like this, um, saying on it, which is probably all backwards for you, but, and I just sort of did the ends, it's kind of a country look. Um, all this is is an orange box that I got from the grocery store, full of oranges obviously. Um, we're going to do a little bit smaller one today, I don't want it quite so tall because I'm going to make it into my bathroom. So this is what it looked like originally just from the dollar store, or sorry, from the grocery store. So we are going to need a few things of course. We're going to need chalk paint. Now I happen to be out of chalk paint so I'm also going to teach you how to make some. So in order to do that uh, we will need of course our white paint, whatever kind of acrylic white paint you have. Um, that's all Dollar Tree stuff. Cornstarch. Uh, you can also use, if you don't have cornstarch, you can use Plaster of Paris or um, baking soda works as well. So you're going to need that and a spoon to sort of spoon it in. Um, bowl to mix it. Of course our trusty paintbrushes and water. Um, and I just picked up these little flowers at the Dollar Tree and so we'll also need our glue gun for that. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm just going to move the camera so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, of course, is take all of this paper and stuff off. Um, and pull out those staples, they come out quite easy, I found. And of course, if you don't have an orange box, anything similar to this will do just fine. Put that away. I'll leave those on for now. Um, the back part here is actually on the wood, so we're just going to have to paint over that. That might take a couple of coats. So, the next thing we need to do, of course, is paint it. But as I said, I am out of chalk paint, so I'm going to show you how to make some. So the first thing we need is our white paint. I'm just going to give it a little shake there. And I'm going to pour, I don't know how much I think I might need, not quite, because we're going to add to it. And we can always top it up. Actually, I think I better get a little bit more than that. Now, I am notorious for not measuring anything. I just kind of see the consistency of it. Um, so the next thing we're going to need is a little bit of water. Now, you don't want it too watery, but a little bit, because you are going to be adding the cornstarch, which is going to thicken it up. Okay, so I'm going to add some water, as I said, and I'm just going to add, I don't know, probably about that much, and we'll play with it as we start adding our cornstarch. So I'm just going to mix that in, and I'm hoping you can sort of see the consistency. It is quite runny, but not water. So I don't know if you can see that very well. So now we're going to add our cornstarch. Where did I put my spoon that I just had? One moment. So, I just got a teaspoon here. I'm going to add one... Oh, hang on, I'm making quite a mess here. I'm going to start by adding just sort of one spoonful in there. And just mix it in. And I think for this amount of paint, that's all I'm really going to need. All right. So that's actually pretty good. Um, just giving it a really good stir. There might be a little bit of lumpies in there until I just get those stirred out. And I'm just going to add just a smidge more water. It doesn't need a lot, but just a little bit there. So that is an easy way to make chalk paint if you're out and super inexpensive. The paint and the cornstarch, I think, too, came from the Dollar Tree. So, so now we're just going to go ahead and give it a coat of paint. I'm going to start with the ends because I want them to dry so I can do a second coat for sure on the ends. Because we will definitely need a few coats for the coverage on this one. And it doesn't matter that the first coat always the first coat always looks terrible. It just does. Oh, I didn't pull the staples on that one, so let's get those out of there. Oops, I'm having fun today with this. Okay. Let's pull those 
those out. And it doesn't, for my project today, it doesn't actually matter if I take them out because one side's going to be against the wall for what I'm doing, so I'm not going to fight with that one today. And these other ones I can't take out anyway, so we'll just make them a part of it. So just painting on a coat. And you're going to put a couple of coats on um, and on the inside. Now the inside, of course, it's just wood, so that's optional and up to you. I do want the whole thing all paint, so I'm going to go ahead and paint the whole thing. And just you'll just need the two coats for sure, maybe three or four even on the back, just depending um, how well the coverage goes on over that. Okay, so I've put a few coats on here just to get it to the white. Um, I didn't worry too much about the inside because I'm kind of going to be hiding that. So the next thing we want to do is put our saying on. So all I've done is I picked a saying I liked. And this one, because it's going in the bathroom, it says beauty doesn't rinse off. But as you can see, it's the mirror image. Now, if you happen to have a really steady hand and you're great at lettering, um, you probably can skip this step and just letter. I am not. I tend to go off course and it's slanted and everything else. So what I do is I just go find one that I like. Uh, this one came, I found it on Pinterest. Um, I picked the fonts I wanted, etc. And then when I went to print, you go into printer properties, uh, I think you have to go under the advanced tab and it says print mirror image. And so that's what I've done. Now if you're going on raw wood, you sometimes all you need to do is the next step and not paint but because I'm going on paint it's going to show up very faintly and I'll show you how to do that so I will have to go over it with the paint after but it gives me nice straight lines and my lettering stays even and all of that so what we're going to do is just take some plain water and a paintbrush and I'm just going to dampen over the words now it will run a little bit, so sometimes you have to do the touch-ups, but for me it still works better than me trying to freehand it because I'm just not that good at it. So then I'm going to place it where I want it. And I'm going to get it wet on this side as well. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is this paintbrush is sort of rounded. Actually, it's not rounded enough, I think. Well, maybe it will be just fine. And I'm just going to rub over the lettering. Now, as I said, you may have to touch up some of the white because, unfortunately, the, the ink sometimes bleeds a little bit. Not always, and it's usually quite faint. So sometimes you can, you're okay without it. And I'm not worried about getting every single little line down because I am going to paint over it. This is just giving me my guide so I stay even and consistent with my lettering. Now you have to be kind of firm but fairly gentle, otherwise you'll rip your paper because it's wet, of course. And you may, depending on how many letters you have and how long it is and how long it takes you to get to this, you may need to go over it with water again. Um, but usually, like I'm going to check that T. Oh yeah, no, we're good, it's there. So I'm just sort of with the roundy, sort of, you don't want to use anything pointy because it will break your paper. I won't go through something. This one's sort of rounded. Um, even the round end of a like a big pen or a Sharpie pen. Oh, you can see I ripped it there, but I think we'll be good because that's still giving me my lines. There we go. Now, hopefully, when I peel it off, can you see that on there? It's quite faint, as I said, but it will give you your lines to keep you consistent. So then just with um, my fine brush and my black paint, I'm going to go over and write on there. So I, uh, I didn't grab a palette, but that's okay for just this color. I'm just going to use it out of the lid. 
Okay, so for when you're doing the lettering, you want your brush a little bit wet, not too wet. So you can do a fairly fine line. You can see sometimes on your brush, on the handle, there'll be a droplet of water and it will find its way down and mess up your painting. Oops.
Okay, so I've got my message all painted on there. Um, if you, you can use any message you want, you can even add them to the ends if you want. I'm not going to for this because the back of mine's gonna, not going to be seen. I'm going to use it in my bathroom. So we're just going to put some greenery or some flowers on there. Now I want to keep it fairly clean and white. Um, just a little bit of the the uh, green in there. So all you're going to need, uh, you're going to need your glue gun. I got those at the Dollar Tree, so super inexpensive, but whatever colors or whatever works for you. And I've just got my snippers here to cut the flowers off. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut some off. Um, not sure exactly what I'm going to how I'm going to put them on there yet, but we will figure that out as we go. And then the leaves. Now one of the things I do like to do with the leaf is I'll take off the little plastic part so that it sort of lays flat. And then I can lay it just sort of flat on there. Um, as I said, I'm not 100% sure how we're going to do this. So I think I'm going to cut this a bit lower. Oh, there it went. And I don't want to go, I don't want to use too much. I don't want it to be too busy for this one. Um, so hopefully my glue gun's hot here. Not quite, maybe. Oh, I'm all stuck to it. There we go. Just going to put a little glue on the back. Glue my rose down. I think we're going to do something like that. Yes, it is. Good, good. I think I need a few more of these guys. Let's see, they'll pop off. Oh, let's just see how she's looking here. Oh, I'm just hacking stuff around today. I'm going to cut that down a bit lower, too. And yes, I think I do like that. And just whatever flowers you like to match your sort of theme um, works great. I think I want this one a bit longer. So I can sort of tuck them there. Just play with it till you get the look you want. Um, with the lettering too, if, if you have trouble with lettering or um, maybe painting isn't your particular thing, you can always uh, decoupage or the dollar store also has um, clings or stickers of words that you can certainly use in place of. Just, uh, just glue them right on and then that's all you would need for that. So if, you know, as I said, if painting isn't your thing or whatever there's always ways to to do the lettering I know I find a hard time to do it freehand I know some people that do beautiful freehand I don't do so well with the freehand I always need sort of guidelines to keep it straight and and uh, consistent all right so I think I'm just gonna pull off some more leaves here um, do I want the whole thing I think I'm just gonna take my trusty scissors and just cut the leaves into pieces. I'm going to take this little plastic bit off again and I'm just going to cut the leaves so they're single so I can 
glue them in. And I still have lots of flowers for another project. Um, I might do a matching uh, bucket as well to go with it. But we'll just maybe make that another tutorial another day. And we're almost done. So there we go. That's our little box. I'm going to put it, as I said, in my bathroom to keep the, you know, the mouthwash and then all those kinds of little things in there. And uh, that was a quick, easy project and very inexpensive. And you can do all kinds of things with it as you like. So I hope you enjoyed my tutorial. Again, please hit the like button, subscribe, leave me a comment. Love to hear from you. Uh, check out my Facebook page, uh, Rini Bobini Creations. Uh, if there's anything on there you would like a tutorial on, please leave me a message. I would be happy to do that for you. And we'll pick a new one next week. Thanks. Bye for now.